Let's move on to the next big game of the weekend, and that would be Penn State 28, Auburn 20, and again, officiating snafus just kind of all over the place, missed pass interference calls, and some of them were questionable and whatnot. The referees making Penn State punt on third down was insane. absurd. I mean, how, how does that even happen? Um, we, we have replay, and replay is not being used. It's like we're back in the damn Stone Ages. And, but this is worse than the Stone Ages, it feels like. Like, I don't remember this stuff happening way back when. Like, I just, I, I, you and I are old enough to to have sat through when when there was no instant replay and all that kind of stuff, right? I remember feeling robbed after games. But also, I don't feel like some of them were as egregious as, as this stuff. I feel like there's so much pressure on these games sometimes that, that maybe, maybe some of these guys just put their foot down for no reason, like they, it's an ego thing almost. But I, I, I can't so figure it out. It's like everything else in the world, Gary. Uh, go out into the public, go out into the ethos, and tell me where people are doing a good job. Okay, like go to a restaurant, go go to a, a store, and see if you get service. See if anybody gives a shit about about you as a customer at all. We are the customers, and 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 the people who run this stuff aren't any good at their job either. They, they just have a different job than the person, you know, waiting tables or trying to go. We, they, it, I just don't think there's enough people in the world that want to do these jobs. So the guys that do do the jobs don't give a shit because they know they're untouchable. You can't fire me. You can't do anything to me because you don't have anybody to replace me with because nobody wants this shitty job. Yes. Yes. You are not incorrect. So, so Penn State looked awesome. The crowd was Amazing ABC. So we just talked about CBS not not pumping in that crowd noise. Yes, ABC put it all out there. <laughs> it was it was all but, crowd noise. But hang on, they they've done they've done that since the beginning of the season. Yes. There's a they've reason people, since, if Fox does it too. They're so great to watch games on, and CBS just turn the volume down to where you couldn't. I literally was thinking, is this crowd asleep the whole time? Uh, it was rainy. It was all that kind of stuff. But no, they were fired up. If you go uh, check out Ross Dellinger's you Twitter. Wouldn't, you wouldn't and, know it by watching it. Yeah. No, it, you, you go check out some of these other Twitter accounts and the videos that they posted from from them singing uh, yes. Won't Back Down, you know, the Tom Petty song between the third and fourth quarter. Like, it is unbelievable atmosphere in Gainesville. This was was on top of that, though. I think the Penn State whiteout yeah. all the time is, is a fantastic spectacle. And, yeah, this was bananas to watch the intro getting the the team onto the field was insane hundred thousand people all wearing white i mean it was unreal sean clifford was the story of the game to me because he has been a question mark for this team for as long as i can remember at this point it feels like he's been there forever and i know he hasn't but in this game 28 out of 32 280 yards two touchdowns he had one pick and he ran the ball six times for 16 yards like he, Mike Yursich is doing a fantastic job with him at quarterback. Their their offense looks good right now. Like it, it looks really good. How how did you feel about it? Yeah, I thought they were really well coached. I thought they played really well. I, I'm with you. Sean Clifford looks better than I was expecting him to look when he came into this season. He what he does best is he protects the football, and and that's that's the biggest thing. The guy just has not turned the football over. He doesn't make mistakes. That team is good enough to where if you don't make mistakes. There's nobody you won't be in the game with. And and no, nobody's good enough in the country to blow you out if you don't give them extra possessions, if you don't turn the football over. And and I think he's the right guy for that. And when he needs to make a big play, he's come up with some big plays. And I think that's massive. When you have that kind of a suffocating defense that they play, it those are two things that that's all you need out of your quarterback is to not screw the game up and when you need a big play to come in big. He's done both of those. He's done both of those really well. I want to talk about Auburn for a minute. We didn't know anything about this Auburn team because they beat the hell out of the deaf, blind, and dumb for the first three uh, two weeks. <laughs> and it, it's one of those situations where I, I really didn't know were they going to be good or, or was Penn State going to steamroll them. Yeah. I had a feeling I think this Auburn team is much better than I thought before the season started. They have an identity. They, not they, just have an identity. Dude, I, I, know, I know you shit all over this Brian Harson's hire. Man, I, I oh, think I'm, he's the I right might have been guy. Yeah. I, hang on. I, you and I have watched three years of Bo Nix not be good at football at all, 
at all. And Bo Nix looks like a capable, competent quarterback. I don't know that this is a knock on Gus Malzahn outside of Bo Nix doesn't run a Gus Malzahn system. And Malzahn wasn't able to adapt his system, so he brought in someone else to try to, to, to coach him. And that said person could not coach him either. Brian Harson seems to be pretty damn good at Auburn. I think Auburn's a hell of a lot better than we thought what they were before the season started. They're going to be in contention for the uh, for the West as well. I think so as well. Uh, Forty carries, one hundred and eighty-two yards. Them having for to play Georgia, them 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 having to play Georgia in in the East as a crossover is the hardest thing in the world this year because Ole Miss looks unbelievable, Alabama still unbelievable, and then you got to play Georgia. Those are three conference games that Auburn. I, I, if they win one out of three, is a miracle. And, you know, I, I do tend to agree. They their lines look fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Nick's Great. not bad in this game, by the way. 21 out of 37 passing, 185 yards, uh, no touchdowns, no picks, which is it, kind of insane that he would go on the road and not throw interceptions, knowing what we've known about him I forever. I was just about to say, against his defense, yeah. not turning the ball over, that's a win. You yes. take that. Before the game starts, you tell me Bo Nix doesn't have any touchdowns, but you know what you're getting out of this running game, and he doesn't turn the ball over a single time. You take that 100% of the time and say, we're going to be in this football game. And and really what may have cost you the game, the fumble by Kobe Hudson. Fumble. Brown Yeti said... Uh, yeah, the kickoff return? No, not the not the kickoff return, but the uh, the trick play that they tried to run where they they toss it to oh, a wide receiver oh, and yeah, run back. And, yeah. yeah. So that may have cost them the game. And then, of course, the other questionable decision was the, the fourth and goal where it's fourth and goal from the two. And I will tell you this, a lot of reports last night from on the field, like Holly Rowe and, and several other people saying that the Auburn players were pissed about that play call because it, it, they they ran a little fade to the corner of the end zone and, and let Bo try and make the play as opposed to, like, they were yeah, gashing Penn State's defense. Giving it to Tank? Yes. Give it to Tank Bigsby. Let him it, try and win it. Give it to that big monster in the backfield. That, Jesus, that's what man. I would have done. But either way, it's that's not That's what I would have done too, brother. Hey, I, I want to go back to the Florida game. Everybody was criticizing Dan for the play call. It wasn't executed well on the two point conversion. Oh, but Auburn yeah. was run. I mean, Auburn. Florida was running the football down Alabama's throat. I absolutely would have ran the ball there, yes. overthrowing the football there. That's, right? That, that's not even a but question. Like, like everybody crushed Dan on the play call. No, 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 no. They didn't block it well at all, at all. For the first no. time all game, they didn't block on a play that was really important. But that ain't Dan's fault. Dan made the right call. The, 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 run the football right there. The blocking on that, by the way, was was actually not terrible. Emory kept the football just a, a touch too long. You think there. he held on to it? But, yeah. but it was an execution thing. It wasn't yes. a bad play call thing. No, it wasn't That's a bad play call. absolutely the right play call. Yes, it was It was execution. It was absolutely yeah, and, execution. And, and, Harson should have done it. Harson should have given the ball to the big son gun that runs behind him. Yes. And now Tank was, he only averaged 4.4 yards per carry in this game. But all you needed but, was two. But all you needed was two. Like, uh, you, for sure. He averaged 4.4. I'll take it when I only need two. No, you, you ain't wrong about that. You ain't wrong about that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.